Nethermill Primary is a very rural school. It's a school with only two classes, primary one to four and primary five to seven. There's 36 children. I'm the teaching head of the school. Problem solving as regards the older class is primarily my responsibility. In Scotland, problem solving has been a formal part of the 5 to 14 maths curriculum since 1991. Right, warm up time, mental maths. So all we want is any way of making 180. Neil. 180. Teachers are finding that problem solving can play an important part in the development of children's social skills and attitudes to work. Well done, Scott. OK. Could I have the four people who are coming with me to do some problem solving this morning down to the hall, please? OK. Right. Have a quick browse over that, please, if you don't mind, first of all. The polygon problem involving geometry and algebra is a challenging one for this group of 10 to 12-year-olds. So the first thing we need to be sure of is what a polygon is. Mm where all the sides are the same size and all the angles are the same degrees. Yep. So an interior angle is that part there on the inside. An exterior angle, you've got to do this. What you do is you take one of the sides and you extend it. And that angle there on the other side of the interior angle is the exterior angle. OK, do you understand that? Yeah. 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 Now, we've got our key strategies in front of us that we've used before. I don't want you to get too bogged down in which strategy you're definitely going to use at the beginning. But what we will do is at the end we'll talk about the strategies that you ended up using. Off you go. With any problem solving activity there's a, a touch of the unknown about it and I think that's where part of the fun comes from it as well as part of the fear. But um, what this problem really requires is for our small group to be able to work effectively together. The first step for the group is to measure accurately the interior and exterior angles of the different polygons Mark has prepared. Need to end it. Right. Exterior. Exterior. 160. 160. Yeah, 60. Somehow I don't think that's right. Yeah, Just put it down and see what the inside one comes to. Yeah. 61. That comes up Two. to 177. Yeah, that's not right. That's, that's not right. right. No. Because it has to add that. up 180. It's a regular triangle, so the inside one's yeah. always got to be 60, isn't it? Yeah. So that will so be 60. So it must be the outside one. It's, six, it's the outside one that's wrong. Yeah. And they should do it again, yeah? Ah. There, that's at 120. That's not like it. Okay, so should do another shape. The angles of a pentagon are particularly tricky to measure accurately because they're not round numbers. Yeah, that's right there. It's there. There. 70. So now I've got 110. Yeah, that's right there. Yeah, that's right. They've measured the angles incorrectly, which will cause a problem later. The rectangle. Very easy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That'd be 90, 90. Could just make the kids know that the interior of a square is 90 degrees and therefore the exterior would therefore be 90 degrees. I was interested to see that they still wanted to measure that. Put it like that right up there and then put a mark at 20 there. The penny finally drops. It's kind of obvious. It's going to be 90 degrees. Right, do you want to try the other one now? Okay. Then, the hexagon. Just extend that one. <laughs> yeah. Extend it. I think these will be 120. That's kind of off 60, actually. Right, 60. 60. Right, 60. So that one should be 120. 120. Yeah, it's the opposite of a triangle. About 120. Yeah, 120. Yeah. What's, what's the one What's the connection between the number of sides and the exterior angle? Wait, that's got, that's got six sides and that's 60. Yeah. And then yeah, that doesn't really work out for that one. I know, because this one's got five sides. Five sides. Five. And it's 70. 70 and that one's got three. That's 60. That's double that. That's the same think, as that. I don't yeah. think that's got yeah. any... I don't think that's got anything really to do with it. The children have gathered all their information but can't work out how to move forward. 
120. That's just 120. That's just for the triangle and the ten. That doesn't make sense. That one. This I know. one. That. That one. That one doesn't make Where's sense. Where's the rectangle? Well, they are 90 and 90. Well, maybe it doesn't. Mm. The square. I don't expect them to be quite as stuck with taking the information they got and coming up with the idea of putting it in a table and that required a bit of input from myself to make that leap. We might have to do it another way. Right, and that's, you know, yeah, think, you're thinking that make, If it doesn't make sense, then maybe we'll do it wrong. Mm -hmm. no. I'll, I'll, I'm going to give you a slight clue in that you've actually picked out the, the shape that is incorrect, your measurements are incorrect there. But what you're saying is important here, what you're saying is that it doesn't make sense to you. Now that's a problem, isn't it? Hence, problem solving. <laughs> so the next part is how do you get unstuck? You have lots of information, you've created a lot of information here. What are you going to do with that information to try and make sense of it? Now if you look down your list of strategies that we have there, which of these is about organising your information? Draw a diagram. Yes. Yeah. Or look for a pattern. Look for a pattern, what else? An organised list of table. Yeah. You draw like something like that, right? And you put a number of sides here. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you put the degrees and then you can kind of work out like... Then do it. Then do it. Okay? Just draw the stories the back of this paper. Why are you doing that? Mark's clue about organising their information gives the children fresh impetus. Why don't you write three lines down there? <laughs> number of sides. Put a number of sides in, like... Yeah. Yeah. Number of sides, angle, interior, oh, yeah, wait, there you go. Do the triangle first. Three. Three. Then put the square. Exterior is 120. And then 60. End of the square. He's got the A4 and then the So four is. 90 and 90. We need to do this one, I think, because it's the one that's in between. Yeah. Put that one there. That's six. That's six. Oh, we've a gap, yeah. so well. Yeah, six. Um, sixty and twenty. One hundred twenty. Sixty. Yeah, no. Yeah, and one hundred twenty. There. So there you go. So I think we should actually draw it again. Yeah. Like draw it again because yeah, I think we've got the angle wrong. Yeah. Is it one hundred and fifteen? Maybe the thing you want. Maybe. Can I just give you a quick clue with, with that one, folks? If you don't mind, Scott. This one. The pentagon is much more difficult to do. Its angles are 72 and 108, so they don't come round to nice round numbers. But you can add that information to your table, and now you're looking for the relationship money, yeah? There's a pattern there. That's a yeah. theory. That's a theory, and that's a theory. Yeah. I know, but what's this one fitting? No, but if it didn't... If I it mean, didn't you're adding 18. No. Yeah, 18. Well, and then, then you're adding 12. Then 12. No. But we've mm -hmm. got to figure out how it matches with the sides. Yeah. So... And we're actually all stuck. We're stuck on this part here because it we can't sense find that. Times okay. 1 out of 20. Right, I understand <laughs> why you're stuck. Your information's good. The way you've organised it is also very good. What you should maybe start thinking about is what's the relationship between these and the complete angle, the complete turn. Think about the 360 degrees in relation to the number of sides and the exterior angle and the interior angle. Well, there we've done 3 times 120. Yeah. Well, if you three, three times what, Scott? Three what Scott times, said was important. Three times 120 is 360. Okay. And four times 90 is 360. 360. 360. Yeah. And six times. 60 is 360. Does this one here, the 5 and the 72, does that create 360? Yeah. yeah. Right, so that's really important. That's your pattern. That's the pattern, that's your relationship between the number of sides and the exterior, and the exterior angle. And if you think about the algebra work that we've done before, where we've minus. got... Can you have the, num what, the, the number of sides and you've got the exterior angle? Can you find a way of writing that uh, down? I'll get, I'll get you a piece to of paper. Total turn yeah. divided by number of sides yeah. no. equals exterior. Murray instantly comes up with the formula linking the number of sides and the exterior angle. No, you can just use 360 for that. Why? Because the, the angle of full time doesn't change. Yeah, it doesn't. Right, 360 divided by... N sides. Equals... Equals... Exterior, exterior angle. EX angle. Just put. Okay, EX. And angle. There's got to be an easier way to write that to be. Yeah. yeah, but you're absolutely correct with your solution, because that is the solution. But I think you're correct, Murray. What you just said, there has got to be an easier way to write this. 
So, if you had exterior, what, which letter could you choose to represent exterior angle? E. So, so there you go, you could put E in, couldn't you? And do you need to have sides next to the letter A? Just put sides next to Ivan's ball letters. Yes, you could do that, or just N. So you could have, as you said, you could have 360 divided by N equals the exterior angle. That's really important, right? And that is you solved the first part of the problem. Um, an old-fashioned three-penny piece was a regular 12-sided polygon. And it says, using what you've discovered, can you calculate its interior and exterior angles? Well, I want you to find out. It's 12-sided, regular polygon. What would its exterior angle be? 30. How do you know? Because uh, 360 divided by 12 uh -huh. would be 30. 30? Yeah. So, there it is. There's your three penny piece, 12 uh, sided, regular polygon. It will be 30. That means it's yeah. exterior angle, each of the exterior angles is 30. Can you create a formula that enables you to be able to figure out what its interior angle would be? You have to add it. Take away from 100. I'm going to leave. Well, you've discussed that with him. Say that again. What you did for the 12 penny coin, you've got 12 sides. <laughs> three penny, and you've got 12 sides, so that's 30. Then take that away from 180, which is 150, yeah. which is give you the interior. Uh -huh. Yeah. Equals 360. Equals, need, don't put the bracket. If you can involve them in uh, the kind of eureka moment of problem solving, where they actually get to achieve something, where they actually get to find something out, then that's partly where the joy of maths comes from. Yeah, equals 150. Yeah. Yeah. Round of applause. Yeah, I'm impressed. I'm impressed, yes. OK. A little later, there's a reporting back session. Well, we drew all the shapes out and then we measured their angles and then did the exterior angles. We started looking for a pattern and then we made an organised table to see if we could, like, any of the patterns would fit with all the angles that we've got. Encouraging children to explain how they arrived at their solution is an important part of the problem-solving programme in Scotland. How did you know to use 180 in that part of the formula? Because half a turn is 180, and when you get a line going off of the shape, then you've always got 180. Right, OK. How did the table help you? It helps organise your thoughts and keep track of the angles and degrees. Right. What about the way that you worked? The, uh, uh, as a group? If you, everybody's good at one thing, it doesn't work. And if everybody is good at like a different thing, then it's better. It's, you work better together. That's right. What about the challenge of finding out something? It makes you quite happy if you find it out and then get it right, because you think you've done the impossible, because you couldn't have done it like a week before. The second programme will be a discussion about this problem-solving session.